Christine and Sean on here, and then you've got a Jane and, yep. Okay. Um, well, why don't we get started? Go on then. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, I will just introduce um, Britannica. Um, so um, my name is uh, Ria, and I'm really excited to bring this um, this webinar um, and host Sir Mark and Shireland and talk about how you guys are addressing um, curriculum changes in your school. Um, and just to give a little update on some of the webinar logistics, we'll be sharing a recording after the webinar. Um, and we welcome questions um, in the Q&A box um, and uh, our team will be able to answer whether there are more instructional questions or questions on how to get more information. Um, and just a little bit about um, Britannica. We've, uh, we partner with local leaders uh, around the world to create solutions like um, some of, like the one that you'll see today. Um, we work with over 150 million students around the world um, and I think what's made our partnership with Shireland successful is our tenure in the digital learning space. We've been um, in digital learning for nearly 40 years um, and also the, the breadth and the quality of our content. So we've added um, over 3 million new media assets um, to our library in 2020. And so um, some of these are the content that we've been able to pull in and curate um, to support different curriculum needs um, in the UK. So without further ado, I will pass it over to you, Mark. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing and you are welcome to um, share your screen. <clears throat> okay, so hi Ria. What, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to take I'm going to take you all through work that we've been doing over the last well quite a, quite a long time and then in the last um, in 2019 with Britannica. So um, this is a this is a presentation that we've used um, with our with our staff across the school. So I suppose I ought to go back a bit. My name's Sir Mark Grundy. I'm the chief exec of Charlotte Collegiate Academy Trust. Um, it's a, a mixed mat of primary and secondary schools based on the edge of Birmingham. So our schools are in what's called the Black Country, which is Samwell and Dudley, Walsall and Wolverhampton. Uh, we have a mix of, um, we've got an outstanding school, we've got some free schools, we've got some schools that we've, um, we've taken over and we've turned into academies. So we, they've become sponsored academies and we've worked with the department. Um, what's unusual about Shireland is I suppose there's lots of things but the two main ones are um, and it sort of says it in the middle of this slide um, for us curriculum really matters so even though we've had a decade of focusing on intervening with the youngsters where almost we didn't look after the curriculum for us we've not done that and a couple of times we've fallen foul of Ofsted and we've had, ended up having dis disagreements with them um, so the curriculum for us is really important the other thing that's really important is is actually using technology to level the playing field um, I suppose the third one is finding world-class resources and opportunities and experiences and inputs. And that's absolutely where Botanica come along. Um, you know, the, the ability to actually work with um, a team that develop and are the custodians of such great resources has been an absolute pleasure. To then turn them into something um, that we think delivers the new inspection framework, but has always delivered our school framework has, has been just a treat. So. Um, Ofsted's dis definition of curriculum, many people have said this, um, I think we're all getting fed up with the fact that people are now having intent implementation impact coordinators and it, it's the new vocabulary that I think is becoming um, pretty tiresome, um, but actually we shouldn't do that, what we really need just to focus on is plan it well, um, implement it well and actually you will get um, a great impact for young people. The problem is over the last period of time, as I've said, we, we haven't really done that. Uh, we've actually encouraged people to almost skip the plan well and make it happen well and just focus on what can we get out of young people. And that's been to their detriment and ours. Um, this is really important. So context, um, I, I had the privilege before Christmas to actually um, be allowed to monitor an HMI inspection. Um, um, in, a, in a 
not a million miles away from, from where my schools are based. Um, and what was really concerning was uh, how little conversation there'd actually been between staff and, and subject leads and class teachers um, and pupils and families about um, what they're doing, why they were doing it, and, and actually how applicable it was to the young people in their care. And there's a big piece of work we need to do about contextualizing learning. I think if you're going to do that though, what we've absolutely got to do is we need to create enough time for our staff. So actually somehow we do a large chunk of the heavy lifting so actually they can do that contextualization. Big issue, I think I like the big issue phrase. Um, vocabulary is something that's really important. Um, use of language is really important. I think one of the things that we've stressed across all of our schools and with other schools that we're, we're now supporting because not only do we have our mat, but um, we have a school improvement wing of our Morty Academy Trust where we help um, two or three other mats and then a group of other schools. We, we have about 70 or 80 schools that we support in the West Midlands. Um, sequencing. So how do you take um, a whole raft of content whole raft or a whole set of skill experiences or value developments or attitude developments and actually make it a meaningful journey and not just a set of very isolated elements. Um, so again, one of the things that we've rehearsed and one of the things that we've tried to weave into the whole concept of the work that we've done with Britannica with launch packs is to create a sequence of lessons and within a, a launch pack, um, to be able to bag up individual um, nuggets of knowledge, um, of skill opportunity, and actually put them in a sort of journey so that you can actually, we can say to, to teachers and to young people, actually, if you went through this journey, this will satisfy this particular process you're going through. In our case, it's GCSE geography and GCSE history. Um, what, you know, what I'm looking for, we like the will thing. I know it tends to be associated much more with primary than secondary, um, but actually all too often, I'm not sure our school leaders really know what they are trying to look for. And uh, the chief inspector who came to visit our school um, before Christmas to look at what we were doing. Um, and Amanda spent quite a lot of time looking at our primary curriculum, our secondary curriculum, um, Britannica, and actually why we'd created uh, what we'd created with Britannica and actually what a difference it could make to young people. And she inevitably came back to this. This is from one of their slide decks um, from a long time ago, Autumn 18, where actually they just talked about all the things that they thought they saw whenever a curriculum delivery was of really great quality. Problem is increasingly what we've seen in the past inspection and now in the inspections of the autumn term is there's not enough of this. So we, we, we haven't done a great job nationally. I don't mean China, but nationally, I don't think we've done a great job in terms of training people in terms of curriculum design, but it's 2020, this is the time to do it. And if we're going to do it, I do think what we need is, um, we're very clear what, what you need to do. This is a set of context, a set of tools, um, a set of resources. And again, for us, launch has been a great thing to do with our staff and share with our youngsters. Um, apart from the fact youngsters inevitably look at launch packs, um, absolutely, they, they were bowled over when we first showed a number of year groups what we were doing together with Britannica. Um, the question I love though is, is the sort of the very direct question from young people when they say, well, why don't, why don't you do, doesn't everybody do this? Um, why don't all companies, publishers actually do this? And that, that's a longer answer than the one about, well, why, why we're doing it. Um, schemes, stickiness, I mean, I would encourage anybody who hasn't looked at the slide decks um, on, via SlideShare for Ofsted to go and look at the curriculum ones from autumn 18 towards the um, education inspection framework ones from 2019 because there, there's a number of parts in here that um, I'm sure most schools have seen but not everybody has seen. A um, bit more on the curriculum and then this um, and I, I quite like this and this analogy, <coughs> excuse me, lots of people's curriculum is a bit like this. Um, it's just like a sort of box of Lego bricks, um, um, <clears throat> not particularly well put together, plenty of colour, <coughs> excuse me, plenty of variety, um, but actually not a lot of order. And if, you, if you're a young person and actually if you're a member of staff teaching or non-teaching, you probably don't have a great idea where you're trying to go through it. Um, so we'd like to think that at Shireland, what we've actually done is we've done this. We've actually taken those blocks. We've given them an order and a pattern. 
Um, we've given them a specificity for young people so that they know why it's particularly different for them. Um, and consequently, we feel our curriculum is much more appropriate for where an inspection framework would look now than perhaps previously. Um, four last slides, and then I just want to, to flick and, and actually uh, try and go live to Launchpack uh, and show you that. So um, we've spent a lot of time with our school leaders across the trust actually looking at things that we're missing. So when have we, you know, what have we taken out? Uh, what have we missed for particular individuals? Um, do we have themes that support particularly, um, particularly a, an extension opportunity, a reinforcement opportunity? Um, so what are the things that have gone that actually we need to look at now that actually give that richness and that depth, but also allow youngsters to work differently, um, either in school or at home? Um, so missed opportunities, actually missing bits. So which bits um, do we just not do anymore? Um, and one of the things that we've been focusing on, and we've, we've just been doing some work in, in uh, the trust on this um, in the last two weeks, um, is that we've actually been looking at what, how wonderful it would be. If, could, we, could we actually not just use Britannica to support geography and history, but actually could we deliver tutor time using the Britannica resources? Could we support SMSC, PSHE? Could we look at... Um, the SRE agenda that increasingly seems to be a bit of a, a, a tension for, for staff. Um, and could we actually chunk it up? Could we put it into a very lively, very uh, rich scheme? And could we offer that to, um, to youngsters and, and obviously to schools? Um, what about where things join together? So again, um, there's been a huge, we've had a huge push for years on connecting our curriculum. So a number of people never really come in to see us and say, well, yeah, this must be fairly new. And it's not. Um, you know, we've had a, a very interesting key stationary curriculum for 12 years. We, 12 years ago, we made a decision that actually um, we would run a primary model in key stage three. So we actually have we have a key stage three curriculum where in year seven, you have 17 hours with one teacher. Um, it's all thematically delivered. It's competency assessed. It's audienced and, um, and prob uh, problem based. Um, and youngsters really get to it and get it and they, they make massive progress with it. Um, so this whole area of how you link some things together um, is something that's really important. And the other bit that's absolutely important and having done, um, having done the shadow inspection there's a lot of work to do around the personal skill development agenda. Personal development is, um, needs a bit more thought and a bit more work. Um, and I suppose my last one of my sort of um, missings is there's definitely some issues in terms of people that are missing. Um, they're, that they're sort of the invisible middle ground of pupils who at times, because they've probably got a in their attainment, they've not really been the focus of a lot of schools. So they've not been the youngsters that, um, who require huge support. They've not been the youngsters who have amazing ability. They're, they're that sort of middle ground. Um, so again, we've spent an awful lot of time focusing our attention on um, that middle ground of invisible pupils um, and increasingly push solutions to them um, to try and show them how it could be different. So this is where I'm going to take a risk. And I'm going to try and stop sharing this and I'm going to try and go to launch packs. Um, so this is, um, this is the Britannica launch pack solution that we've worked with clearly Britannica with. Um, this is, this has been great for us. As I said, as I said earlier, we've got to work with a team in Chicago. Um, we, we sat as a group. So I got the secondary staff across our trust. I brought a couple of other external people in, brought a guy called Mick Waters in. Um, Mick used to, used to run the curriculum, the curriculum and qualifications authority um, for the country. Um, and we basically looked at that. Wouldn't it be great if what you could do is instead of um, geography teachers and history teachers having to go and find the resources um, to teach um, each week their youngsters in terms of GCSE geography and history wouldn't it be great if actually somebody did that heavy lifting um, <clears throat> and bagged it up and presented it to you so that's what we've done um, we've gone away we've worked with um, the team at Britannica um, <clears throat> and we've basically um, we've taken this launch packs tool 
um, and we've gone and taken the GCS, the GCSE history um, and GCSE geography syllabuses across the board, so the four main boards, um, we've put it all together and then we've matched the resources so that actually what we've got is we've got launch packs for um, all of geography and live currently pretty much all of history, all the major ones. And we're just, we're just finishing a little bit of work on some of the slightly more unusual um, themes that you can do in GCSE history. Um, when, now this is where you take your risk in your hand. I mean, I, I probably should have said at the beginning of this presentation that we've had an interesting time. Um, there was a major, major water outage just down the road from my school this morning. So I am actually sitting at home doing this. So I don't have any of the benefits of a, a, um, techie team helping me and um so this is this is a real risk they say you should, they say you should never work with children and technology so um when you go to a launch pack uh, are, mark i don't are you intending to have your screen be sharing right now oh uh, yeah sorry sorry oh, sorry, okay. sorry so have you not got that sorry Ria. Not, yeah we don't have that right let me go back to this uh, there we go Yep. Can you see that? We're good. Okay, I'm going to go back a bit then. So just, so sorry everybody. Um, so, um, so in terms of, can you see that? Yes. Yep. So what you should be able to see there is you should be able to see all of the launch packs um, that actually we've put together in terms of geography and history. And what you can also do is you can go through these. So you can actually go to the individual sub elements of the GCSE geography and history syllabus. I mean, I'm choosing at the moment just to look at ones in general. And the one I just thought I would show you um, is this one. So what you've got together all there are all the launch packs. What you've got here is this one, which I'm just going to choose. Um, so I'm going to click on the Elizabethans abroad launch pack. And when it fires it up, what you then get is you get this whole set of resources. So th this is absolutely what we've tried to do. We've used Microsoft Office 365, we've used Teams, we've, we've used OneNote over the last few years, and we've bagged up resources and we've written things and we've, um, we've, prov we've provided a sort of learning journey and a set a bag of resources to our young people. But they've always been bound by what we can find. They've always been bound by somebody doing quality assurance. Um, they haven't always been as up to date. Um, they're, sometimes they're littered with images that uh, I think we probably thought were of questionable quality. And then you sort of happen upon an opportunity of working with Britannica and suddenly it's completely different. And what you get then is you get the ability to actually put together everything that they have. And I'm just scrolling down this. Um, so these are all the resources that we have found that are matched to aspects of the history syllabus. So if I'm teaching this element in terms of Elizabethan history, what I now um, don't have to go and do is go and see if I can find something that I actually want about Sir John Hawkins or about Francis Drake. What we've then wrapped around it at Shireland is we've, we've created a series of these things. So uh, you can tell the difference. The blue ones are things that have very directly come from Botanica. These ones, um, brown, I suppose is, is the color are where we've created a, a learning resource, which is the resource route through. Um, we've also, uh, there's some more of these at the bottom. So there's the learning journey, the student activities. We've also tagged these things in. So we've tagged, um, there is a facility in Britannica whereby actually what you can do is you can actually tag a, a note. It could be a pedagogical prompt. It could be a content prompt that actually says, you know, think about this look at this it could even be an activity prompt so what you have here is you have the whole bag of goodies to be able to deliver this Elizabethan aspect and for us this is exactly what we think we should be able to do in relation to the new inspection framework we should be able to actually take something to to, to know what you want to cover to know which particular um, elements of knowledge, skill elements, attitudes, values you want to cover. And then actually to be able to do that heavy lifting of providing both for young people so they can use it in school and at home, but staff to do the heavy lifting so that actually what they can then do is customize this. And that's what you can do. And again, it's just, it's a great feature of what Britannica have created with launch packs, which is 
if this is the launch pack and this is the sort of root launch pack, what customize lets me to do is to decide that I've got a year 11 group where pretty much all of this is what I, actually what I want to use. But there's, there's, there's a few of the youngsters where one or two bits probably are more difficult or, or actually they're beyond it. So what I can actually do with customize is I can change the, con the, the constituent parts of the launch pack and then I can save it for those youngsters. If I, get, if I get another group that actually um, is exactly like that group, I can, I can use that version of the launch packs again, or I can just go back to the root one. And if you go back to where some of these slides started, where do I think we're having real problems in terms of um, delivering the curriculum the way we really want to? Well, I, said, I don't think we customise it well. I don't think we contextualise it well. And my experience of being in other schools supporting them and actually being on um, monitoring the HMI inspection was that's exactly what I didn't see. We didn't get to see that ability in a nimble way without it absolutely um, destroying staff's um, time, uh, work life balance. We didn't see that customization, that contextualization easily. And that, that is absolutely what this can do. Um, so, um, Go back, I'm going to sort of wrap up now, because what I'm going to do over the next three or four weeks is I'm going to take people through exactly how we think we can use this. So today was a sort of launch packs in the context of the new inspection framework. Um, next week, we thought we'd actually do a little bit more work on showing what we've done so far with youngsters and actually some of the feedback we've had from youngsters. But perhaps to finish, um, this is the sort of wealth of what we've been able to create with Britannica. Um, and there are there are just some wonderful launchbacks here. Um, uh, I'm, it would be really wrong to finish any webinar when I'm describing this without saying how proud I am of our staff. Our staff have worked really well. Um, and actually the, the students um, in both Shireland and Thorns who've trialled launchbacks and fed back to us, their feedback has been invaluable. Um, I hope you've enjoyed um, watching this. Hopefully I'll see you again. Um, I, I, I think what we're going to do now, Ria, is we, we're going to actually, you're going to give some information about how people can make contact if they want to make contact with you, aren't you? Yes. Okay. Um, Shall I stop sharing? Yep. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, if you are interested in learning more about launch packs or the programs that we've developed, um, our phone, email, um, and also a website. Um, that also contains a mini documentary that we created um, with Shireland about how they've been approaching curriculum in their school. Um, and then we have a new registration link um, for the second webinar, which is bit.ly um, slash UK Masterclass 2020. Um, so I will leave that up there. Uh, after this webinar, I will send out um, the recording um, and some of these resources so you have those accessible. Um, and like Mark said, we hope that you um, continue to join over the next couple of weeks as he goes more into um, the work that's been done and feedback um, that Shireland has been getting. Um, and then, and also to invite um, colleagues. If, I don't know if anybody had any questions. Let me check the question and answer. I don't see any. Um, so, all right, yeah. Um, Again, uh, I'll leave the screen up for a moment, um, but I'll also be sending this information out um, to everybody who's attended and also who registered. Um, so thanks for joining us um, this afternoon. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks.